بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين We continue our studies of hadith about sincerity of intention from Munyatul Murid. The next hadith is from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he says, Man ta'allama ilman li Allah, Whoever learns some knowledge for something or someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa arada aw arada. In some versions it says aw. And or or. Uh, the meaning is clear uh, it seems to be the same thing he learns for someone or something other than God or he wants with this learning someone or something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَلْيَتَبَوَّ مَغَعَدُهُ مِنَ النَّارِ his seating would be placed in fire because when you learn something for something worldly something material something selfish then you would not just stop in learning you want to use it and apply it in the way that you can please those for whom you are learning for example if I learn so that I can get closer to the people who have power and position or I can get closer to the people who have money so just learning is not going to please them for sure expectations also would come I should try then with such bad intention to please them and pleasing them means either you have to do what they want or to say what you want or act as they want you have to praise them you have to justify their bad actions and sayings so basically you become a tool for them and that's the problem so when we have someone who is not sincere in learning and as we have in this hadith he learns for the sake of Allah, for the sake of someone or some people or group who are not godly or for some reason which is not godly so this would not stop in the case of learning only that for example he goes to school he goes to Jose he uh, takes notes he studies he does everything for learning just this is not sincere of course this is a problem anything that we do which is not sincere would be a negative point and would be a problem in our pursuit of perfection but normally it would not stop just at the level of learning then this person would need to do something to please those people because why he is learning perhaps he's learning because he wants to become an alim, he wants to become a person who has respect, whose ideas are respected, whose words are acted upon, then he wants to use this in order to get closer to the people who have power or money or position, and then they would not be pleased unless he does something for them, or he says something for them, he interprets religious issues in the way that they like it so 
you may think it would be just a matter of learning but finally it would lead to teaching for the sake of people uh, giving fatwa uh, judging uh, praising and blaming people based on the interests of the people who have power and position so it leads to lots of problems and this would be not acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if in any ways we serve false causes we serve people who have bad intentions who are selfish who are greedy who are thirsty for power and fame who mistreat people and then we use our knowledge in order to help them and to serve them this would lead to very fundamental questions so we should not be surprised why it says his sitting place would be settled in fire because it would lead to a standing against the will of God and instead of being a person whose knowledge would help the truth would help virtues would help people we would become an aid and assistant for the unjust people or selfish people who have no limit in their selfishness the next hadith which has some similarity but has more details and is um, maybe more famous uh, you have heard it perhaps in different times is again from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man talaba al-ilm liyujariya bihi al-ulama aw liyumariya bihi al-sufaha aw yasrafa bihi wujuha al-nas ilayh adkhalahullah al-nar or in some versions whoever seeks knowledge for one of these reasons either he wants to go in the rank of ulama to compete ulama in some versions you know we have something like yobahi to do mubahat with ulama you know to say for example i am also alim i am one of those senior ulama i am higher than for example others anyway in order to get to the circle of ulama and to go higher in the ranks and you know levels of ulama so that people say mashallah he's a great alim great scholar he's the ayatollah he is i don't know mujtahid he is filsuf he's a philosopher anyway his intention is a kind of fame a kind of position but among scholars of course when he has a fame and position among the scholars then the public and the lay people also would respect him or he learns so that he can do mira with sufaha so i need to explain two terms for you sufaha and mira sufaha is the plural form for safi safi is the unwise the one who acts irrationally unwisely means he is not hakim he is not aqil he is not wise he is not rational the people who don't act upon knowledge understanding truth these are safi for example you know in fiqh we have some issues about the people whose 
level of maturity and understanding is very low therefore they are not able to enter into valid financial or legal transactions for example someone who is very 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 young a child cannot sell or buy or a person whose intelligence and understanding would not be high even if it's for example age-wise okay there are people maybe they are 20 30 40 years so they have no age problem they are mature age-wise but understanding wise no they are called safi and their transactions are not valid it needs to be supervised or be conducted by their guardian or someone who has guardian for such people if they don't have guardian so in any case safi is a person who does who would not act wisely rationally reasonably responsibly they act very you know easily they are triggered and emotions can easily persuasions can easily trigger them to act so this is the meaning of sufaha sufaha is the plural for safi yomari as i said comes from mira mira means debating when it is done for the sake of proving yourself to be right not out of interest for understanding or demonstrating the truth no you want to prove yourself it's very important you know sometimes maybe my position is right but my concern is not to make the other party understand the right position or the truth I want to prove that I am right and you are wrong the truth is just here a secondary issue and when you reach to Mera then it can even be continuing when you know you are wrong or when you don't know the truth no longer truth is the main thing the main thing is to prove that I am right and the other person is, person is wrong so when you see from your side or the other side or from both sides the debate has become mera so you should stop it even if you see that you are okay and the other person is for example doing mera you should also not continue because then also you are doing mera because this debate is not productive we have hadith for example says rahimallahu umra an tarak al mira walau kana muhiqqan may allah's mercy be upon the one who leaves this type of debate even if he is right of course maybe this is because when you say to people if you are right you can continue everyone would say i am right <laughs> So perhaps the reason for saying that even if you are right is to avoid people who think they are right. Or maybe you are right, the other person is not right. In any case, when one, as I said, when one party or both parties have lost their focus on haq and it has become a personal issue for them to prove themselves to be right and the other party to be wrong, we should not continue. So some people learn and their whole intention is say okay let me learn these for example sciences let me learn fiqh, philosophy, usul, akhlaq so that I can argue with everyone. We have in our community for example people that I love to argue and debate with them and prove that they are wrong. Or for example people from other madhahib even people 
from other madhahib sometimes you know unfortunately we may argue with them not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not for the sake of truth just we want to prove they are wrong or we want to humiliate them by bringing a strong arguments not to soften their heart for the truth the whole idea should be we help each other to be prepared mentally and spiritually for understanding the truth but when debate becomes confrontational and it's continued for the sake of debating both mind and heart would be locked would be closed and people just want a way out from this debate by saying that I was right or at least not accepting they were mistaken truth is no longer the main thing and this is why you know some people like Ghazali say in Ihya Ulum al-Din that in general it's better not to have debate in front of other people in, in front of viewers because it would be very difficult in front of public to continue your debate with someone while still you are focused on the truth sometimes you know we want just to save our reputation in front of people so the second reason mentioned in this hadith is the third is he wants to bring towards himself faces of people attention of people he wants basically to become a very popular figure he wants to win the hearts of people why not because he is an alim who wants to take people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if an alim has respect this would help people to go closer to God no it's selfish he wants praise of people he wants popularity he wants fame he wants his lectures to be well attended he wants you know his books to be read he wants you know everyone to praise him not because of serving religion or truth no just he's thirsty for fame some people become famous through advertisement or for example you know movie movies films you know they become celebrities and this person wants to become a celebrity through religion but mentality is the same some people want to become famous by being I don't know an actor or actress or you know uh, a sports men or women not that they have interest in what they do they have interest in becoming famous or becoming rich so if this happens to religious scholars it would be even worse because now you who are expected to be more than anyone else at the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are replacing Allah's will with your own pleasure and you want just to become famous and respected by people so if anyone does learning for these reasons or one of these reasons according to this hadith that our Sunni brothers in different sources have mentioned Allah would enter him into fire or his sitting place would be settled in fire because as I said it starts with learning for bad intentions but it would lead to doing lots of serious 
and grave mistakes and sins in order to reach what they want, in order to achieve what they wanted in all these years of learning. And that is to serve bad people and the unjust by serving them in praising them or legitimizing and endorsing what they say, acting or saying or issuing verdicts as they like. So this would lead to those consequences. Uh, in order to have more time for questions, so I stop here and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to first bless our sincere scholars and students and help them inshallah maintain throughout their lives the sincerity of intention and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to give us sincerity of intention and tawfiq for learning inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin